How is it going, everybody? Welcome back to another Pokemon Worst Team Challenge. This time around, we are doing Pokemon Soul Silver. Now, when looking through the team to make for Johto, I realized that there are a lot of terrible Pokemon throughout Johto. Now, in the past, I did make a video on the worst Pokemon in every generation. If you guys have not checked it out, links in the description down below. But after doing a lot of research and looking at everyone's worst tier list for Johto, these are the Pokemon I am going to use for this run. So I am very nervous because all these Pokemon kind of suck in their own way, but hopefully when they come together, they will kill it and we will beat this game. So these are the rules I will be setting for myself for this run, almost similar to the one I did before. Now I also did make a video not too long ago trying to beat Pokemon Emerald using the worst team. If you guys have not checked that out yet, the link will also be in the description down below. But guys, before we get into it, make sure to hit that like button down below, subscribe if you have not, and let's get into it. All right, here we go. Soul Silver time to beat you using the worst team. Now, since Sun of Flora is one of the hardest Pokemon of this team to get because the Sunstone is very, very unlikely that I will get in the bug catching competition, I decided to put Sun Flora as my starter. Now, I did name Sun Flora Sunny. Now, Sunflora actually has some pretty good moves that are really useful early on in this run. But after grabbing our starter, we head to the Mr. Pokemon house to grab the egg for the professor. But on the way back, we encounter our first rival. Now, even though he does have the type advantage on him, Sunflora was able to get the upper hand and take down his Cyndaquil. Now, of course, once the officer does ask you what the name of the redhead boy is, we, of course, call him Steve. For those that don't know, it is an inside joke on this channel. Those who follow me for a long time know what this means. Now, with that all out of the way, we make our way towards our first encounter route, the Dark Cave. Now, this is where we will find a Dunsparce at a very low chance. Now this didn't take as long as I thought because we found Dunsparce after a couple of encounters. But with him being found, we finally catch our second Pokemon to add to the team. And this guy, we call him Dummy. Because, well, just look at him. Now once Dunsparce is caught, we find ourselves in Violet City, where south of that, we head to the Ruins of Alf. And this is where, after doing the puzzle, we get access to the unknown cave. And in this cave, we find ourselves our next Pokemon. And funny enough, this unknown was Unknown Eye, which of course means Impulse. Now I realize after editing this video, I should have named this guy Impulse, because I just absolutely makes zero sense. Now, Unknown is probably going to be the worst Pokemon on the team because it can only learn one move, which is Hidden Power. Now, once we catch Unknown, we make our way towards the Bell Tower. And once there, we defeat the last monk on the top of the tower, allowing us to receive the HM Flash. Now, after all the battles we've been through, I thought our Pokemon would be ready enough to battle the first gym. Now, in the end, remember, we do get three chances per battle, and our Pokemon looked more than enough ready. Now, we were able to take out his Pidgey with no issues. But when Pidgeotto came in, oh my god, the problems just started. Now, after taking down my unknown, I threw in Dunsparce, and at one point, I was so close to beating him. But of course, Pidgeotto knows Roost, and it took a lot more effort than I thought. Now, even with trying to put him to sleep, Pidgeotto was hanging on for dear life. Sadly, in the end, he was able to take down my Dunsparce as well as Sunflora. I did not expect that from the first gym of Johto. 
So I decided it was smart to go out and train so I could hit level 13 and just like his Pidgeotto. Now once I felt like my team was ready, we went back to battle Faulkner. And just like last time, Pidgey was very easy to take down. Now once Pidgeotto came in, I went in with a game plan. First putting him to sleep and then absorbing as much damage as I could so my rage would hit even harder. And with all that power, Pidgeotto finally went down and we got ourselves the first gym badge. After that, we enter Union Cave, which is en route towards the next town. But before we battle the gym, we find out Team Rocket has stolen a bunch of Slowbros to get their tails. Once inside the well, we battle against the Team Rocket boss. Now once we save all the Slowpoke tails from being either sold or eaten, I wanted to go out and train a little bit more before I battled the second gym. But of course, our rival, Mr. Steve, had to stop us and wanted to battle. But in the end, Steve was no match for our team. Which is funny enough saying that because this is supposed to be the worst team in Johto. Now with Steve out of the way, we were able to get into the Elix Forest. There, we trapped a Farfetch'd and brought him back to the owners to get the HM cut. And after a little bit of training, our team was set to get the second badge. Now, I know Johto is not the hardest generations out of all nine of them, but oh my god, Bugsy was probably the easiest gym battle I have ever done. And with this supposedly being the worst team, this was a very easy. But I do feel like we were a little bit lucky because Rollout just kept hitting and took down Metapod and easily took down Kokuna and his ace Pokemon Scyther. And with that, we easily got the second gym badge. Now, since none of our Pokemon are able to learn Cut, I went out to catch a Rattata and quickly use him as an HM Slave. But with the path now open, this is the area I wanted to teach Dunspar's headbutt. Now after battling the last trainer on Route 34, we make our way into Goldenrod City. From here we find the gym leader Whitney trying to beat this quiz. Now this is when I came in, the so called Pokemon Master, to beat this quiz. And while this took me a couple of tries, I finally beat it and got Whitney's attention. This allowed me to now enter the third gym. Now for those that played Johto back in the day, remember that this gym could be absolutely hell. Not only is her Mel tank very, very bulky, but it could heal itself and use a rollout, which gets powerful with every hit. So I was kind of nervous going into this battle. All right, here we go, Whitney. We are coming for our third gym badge. No matter how hard you may fight, we are getting that badge. So I started with Unknown against her Clefairy. And this was actually a pretty close back and forth battle. Now, even though Unknown only knows one move, he put up a great fight and eventually taking down Clefairy. Now, even though he went down himself from a burn, that is okay because now we can focus ourselves on Miltank. So my strategy against Miltank was to leech seed him and stall as much as I could. And that's kind of what I did because on top of the leech seed, it died after only two Mega Drains. Now, at first, I thought she had more than two Pokemon, but once Miltank went down, we beat Whitney. And I was kind of surprised how easy that actually was. But because Whitney is a sore loser, she started crying. But in the end, we did get ourselves the third gym badge. Next, we go next door to grab the water pot because we'll need that to get our next Pokemon. Yes, it is now time to get ourselves a Mr. Pseudo-Wudo. 
And after battling and catching him, we name it the most original name ever. Don't judge me, I very much suck at giving nicknames. Now once that path is open, we find ourselves in Akrotik City. Where once we enter the bell tower, we find ourselves again battling Mr. Steve. And surprisingly, this time Steve was getting the upper hand. His Magnemite was a very hard to take down for some reason, taking down two of my Pokemon. And in the end, uh, sadly, we actually lost. Now coming back to fight Steve for the second round, I came with some vengeance. Now I quickly took care of his Ghastly, then after I was finally able to take down his Magnemite without losing too many Pokemon. Now Zubat was the easiest to take down, and Quilava took a couple of tries, but we were able to take him down as well, and Steve uh, finally goes down. Now after battling Steve, we went out to train to prepare ourselves for the 4th gym, as well to get the HM strength. After that, we entered the Ecritik City Gym to battle some of the trainers and make our way towards Morty. Now, Morty is actually one of my favorite gym leaders in Johto, and ghost Pokemon can be very tricky. But I was prepared and ready to go and get ourselves the fourth badge. Now, I start off with the Dunsparce, and he was able to take down his Ghastly using Rollout. Now once Haunter came in, I threw in Sunny. Now even though he was quickly able to put me to sleep, once I woke up, I was able to use a couple of growths and get big hits from Mega Drain, thus finally taking down his Haunter. Now in came his ace Pokemon, Gengar. So I decided to stick with Sunny so I could use a Leech Seed. And lucky enough, I was able to get it off. Once he was seated, I switched into Dunsparce to have some sort of type advantage. I used Glare to paralyze him and cut his speed. After that, I just went full out using the only move I could use, a Rollout. And in the end, a Rollout was more than enough to take down his Gengar. And for his last Pokemon, Haunter stood absolutely no chance because my rollout attack was already on a roll. See what I did there? And yes, Haunter went down, getting ourselves the fourth gym badge of Johto. Now, after beating Morty, we find ourselves in Olivine City, and of course, Steve is always causing issues. Once Steve is out of our way, we head to the lighthouse to find Jasmine, who needs medicine for the Ampharos. Now since I forgot to get a Surf, we cannot pass to make our way towards Cinewood Island. So I head back and save the beautiful women of this city from Team Rocket and get ourselves the HM Surf. And then remembering on this beach, we can actually find a Corsola here. Now after fishing for a while, we finally find Corsola. And then midway through the battle, I realized I forgot to buy Pokeballs. So after buying more Pokeballs, we go and catch the Corsola to add it to the team. Now I named Corsola Crown. Now I think this name was pretty innovative. Let me know what your favorite nickname has been so far. But with Corsola now on the team, we can finally teach someone Surf. And with that, we finally are able to make our way to Sinnoh Wood City. Now this is where we can get to the medicine for Jasmine's Ampharos. But before we head back, we have to beat and fight our next gym battle. So I used some of his trainers to help level up my Pokemon. Now once I felt my Pokemon were high enough level, it is now time to battle Chuck. And I honestly forget Chuck only has two Pokemon, which is not that much. Now what's funny about battling against his Primeape, while he was using Double Team, I was using Growth to boost my attack. And he thought I was going to miss, no 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 no, this is not how it works and Sunflora was able to take down Primeape. Now even though his Polyrath did put me to sleep and almost kill me, 
Sunflora was able to wake up just in time and one-shot his Poliwrath. And with that out of the way, we get ourselves the fifth gym badge. Now with the gym out of the way, we make our way back to Olivine City where we drop off the medicine. And with Ampharos feeling better, the gym is now open and ready to battle. Now here we go, time to get our next gym badge. Now steel type Pokemon can be very tricky, especially when you don't have a super effective move. And right off the bat, Magnemite took down my Dunsparce. So next I threw in Sudowoodo, hopefully to get more hits on this Magnemite. But sadly, after two Thunderbolts, Sudowoodo went down. Now thank god for Sunflower because I was able to boost up my special attack for a couple of turns using growth. And once he was high enough, I was finally able to take down this Magnemite. And in the process, Sunflora was able to learn Petal Dance, a very good move. Now next up was the big boy in Steelix. And of course, Sunflora, being the OG he is, took down Steelix in two shots. Now it was time for her last Magnemite. Now even though Sunny became confused, he was determined to take down this Magnemite. And that's exactly what Sunflora did, and we got ourselves the 6th Gym Badge. Now we are so close to getting all 8 Gym Badges, we just have 2 more left. We have now arrived in Mahogany Town, where the 7th Gym awaits us. But before anything, we make our way towards Lake of Rage where we find the shiny Gyarados. Now since I can't actually catch this Gyarados, I kill him to get the red scale. And this red scale you can actually bring back to Mr. Pokemon to get experience share. And that's exactly what we did. Now before we go to the gym, we have to go help Lance to take care of Team Rocket. Now after helping Lance take care of the last of the Team Rocket leaders and all the exploding electrodes, he gives us the HM Whirlpool. And now we have access to enter the 7th gym. Alright, here we go against Price, the Ice type gym leader. Now he starts off with Seal and I go with Dunsparce. Now right off the bat, Seal was not doing that much damage on Dunspar, so I thought it was time to use Rollout. And boy did that work in my favor because Rollout just kept getting worse and worse and ended up taking down Seal. Now when Pilo Swine came in, he hit me very hard with Blizzard. But with the rollout being active and stronger than ever, we took him down with one shot. But sadly, once Dugong came in, he was much faster than me and took Dunsparce down. So I decided to use Sunflora, hoping he would eat one attack, which he did, surprisingly eating an Aura Beam. Now, even though I did use a Leech Sheet, this wasn't the cause of his death. Sunfloor just used Petal Dance and took him out in one shot. Which was honestly very surprising. I didn't think that would one shot him. But in the end, we got ourselves the seventh badge. Now realizing we still missed a lot of stuff in the region, the man won't let us through. So we had to go back and dress as a Team Rocket to save the radio tower. Now once we find the head of the Team Rocket Grunts disguised as the Radio Tower boss, we quickly take care of him and his team. But of course, after battling that guy, Steve for some reason wants to battle me. Remember Steve, there is a time and place to battle. This is not it. But too bad for Steve and his team because he was no match for me. And we take him down with no real issue. Now once at the top of the tower, we find the last person to battle. But he stood no chance against this stellar team and we took him out. Now with that all out of the way, we get access to the ice path. And in this area, this is where we will find our last Pokemon to add to the team. Mr. Delibird. And we find him right away. But of course, I killed him. 
And then we find him all once again, and we kill him by accident. Again. Now once finding him for the third time, I tried to take my time in capturing him because I was not going to look for him again. And this time, thank God, we actually caught Mr. Delibird. And well, this guy was kind of hard to name, so I just went with the easy route and called him Iceburb. Hey, I thought it was a clever name. But once we exit the ice path, we are finally in the last gym city, Black Thorn City. But here we are, another useless Pokemon to add to the team. I don't know who's worse, Delibird or Unknown. Both have terrible move pulls and don't do that much damage. But once the team is trained and ready to go, we make our way to the 8th and final gym badge. Now this gym is actually getting me very nervous because Dragon is not an easy type to beat. But here we go, let's get ourselves the 8th badge. We have been on a roll with the gyms, so hopefully it stays that way. And it started off uh, very good because Dunsparce was able to take down Gyarados. But once that Dragonair came in, it just went downhill. First taking out my Dunsparce and then taking down Unknown. Now Sunflora did put up a great fight, but he also went down in the process. Now, even though Corsola was able to take down one Dragonair, her second Dragonair came in and not only took down Corsola, but also took out my Sudowoodo and one shotted Delibird. This gym, I feel, is not going to be easy. So, for the second time around, I started with Delibird this time. And, well, he died very quickly, doing no damage at all, because he sucks. But thank god Corsola came in and was able to take down Gyarados. But of course, once that Dragonair came in, Corsola went down. And well, so did my unknown. This gym is getting harder by the second. Now after using Sunny to leech seed this Dragonair, I switched into Pseudo Wudo. Now Sudowoodo was able to eat a couple of hits and finally we were able to take down the first Dragonair. Now next up was Kingdra. Now I used the same strategy I used on Dragonair using Leech Seed. Now I threw in a Dunsparce to try and paralyze him which actually worked though I lost Dunsparce in the process. Now when I put in Sunny back in I was thinking he was gonna die in one shot. Luckily, he was able to eat a couple of hits, even from his stronger moves like Dragon Pulse and Hyper Beam. And in between that, I was using Growth to boost his special attack. And it did help me out in the end because we were able to take down Kingdra. Now here we go, her last Pokemon. Now since Sunflora's special attack was already boosted up because of all the other growths, I just needed a couple of hits to take this Dragonair down. So even after being paralyzed, Sunflora tanked it and we took down Dragonair, finally getting it the 8th and final badge. Now since Claire didn't want to give us the badge right away, we had to go to the Dragon's Den and talk to the Elders. And then we get to rub it in her face that the Elders think oh, we are the special one. I, must, I think I'm a special one. But in the end, she gives us the 8th and final badge. Now after being the gym, we had to head back to Ecritique City and see these lovely ladies at the theater. Now they wanted to battle us to test our skill. And battle we did. This was one of the hardest things I probably had to do in this run, but thank god we were able to do it. Right after we battled those lovely ladies, we had to make our way to the Whirl Islands. There we find them waiting for us with the title bell and the feather, thus awakening Mr. Lugia. Now honestly, I did not know anything about this game going into it, and this cutscene was really, really cool. Now Lugia is one of the coolest OG legendaries, and this was really, really cool to see. But sadly, since we cannot catch this winged beast, I had to kill him to get some good experience. 
But with that out of the way, we make our way to Victory Road, where the Elite Four awaits us. And again, look who is waiting for us. It's Mr. Steve. This guy is always at the worst place at the worst times. But of course, we do like we always do against Steve and kick his butt. And we beat him for the very last time. Now we need to train our Pokemon to level 50 because that is the highest level at the Elite Four. So we have a long way to go. Well, here we go. After training for so long, all my Pokemon have hit a level 50. Now I'm very nervous about this run through the Elite Four because this team is a pretty rough and Elite Four can be very tricky, but I'm very optimistic. But here we go, the first battle of the Elite Four versus the Psychic Type Trainer Will. Now he starts off with Zatu and I start off with Corsola. Now right off the bat, he did end up confusing me, but Corsola fought back in a Ushadable and got a massive hit on him. And on the second move, Corsola was able to take down Zatu. This is such a great start. Now when Jinx came in, I decided to switch out to Sudowoodo. And of course, Jinx was able to put me to sleep. And halfway through this battle, I thought Sudowoodo was going to die as he couldn't wake up. But I was able to wake up at the right time and Sudowoodo was able to get off a Sucker Punch and beat Jinx. Now with Slowbro, Sunflora came in and in two Mega Drains was able to take down his third Pokemon. Now once Will's second Zatu came in, I thought Corsola was going to do the exact same thing he did the first time. But life had other plans in mind and Zatu was the one to take down Corsola. But once I switched into Tree, even while having 1 HP left, he was able to take down Zatu. Now here we go, Will's last Pokemon, and it's a hard one, Executor. It can be very tricky and very tanky. So right away, I threw in a Dunsparce and used Glare to paralyze him. Then at one point, I was so close to taking this guy down, but of course he had to use a Full Restore. Now I was able to regain some health using Roost, so at least it gave Executor a run for its money. Now Will was not making it easy for me, he even ended up using another Full Restore. But thank god Headbutt made him flinch twice and Quick Claw helped us to finish the job, taking down Executor. And that's it, we beat Will the first Elite Four member. Now after healing our guys, it is now time for the second E4 member, Koga. So he started off with Ariados and I started off with Delibird. I used Fly right away and luckily I was able to hit Ariados hard and take him out in one shot. Now next up is Fortress and Fortress can be an absolute unit. Especially that I have zero fire type moves. So I thought using a leech seed and stall him out as much as I could would be the best approach. But then realizing Fortress doesn't hit hard and I use this to my advantage. So I tried to boosting up Sunflora's special attack as much as I could using growth. Now Fortress did something I should have expected from the very beginning. After using a fuller restore and eating one of my pedal dances, Fortress used Explosion and not only took down himself, but Sunflora in the process. And that really hurt. Now once Venomoth came in, I used Dunsparce and was able to take him down. But sadly, in the next round, Dunsparce couldn't even get a hit off Muck because he died from poison. Now when I threw Unknown in, I did not expect Hidden Power to hit so hard and be super effective. And luckily, Unknown was able to take down Muck without getting a single scratch on him. But of course, once Crobat came in, he held on and sadly, Unknown went down in one shot. 
But that's okay. That's why we have Sudowoodo to come in and play cleanup. And we were able to finish off Koga once and for all. Now, here we go with the third Elite Four member, Bruno, and which could be kind of the easiest one here. Now, just to test my theory, I threw an unknown once again, and oh my god, Hidden Power was super effective and took down Hitmontop in one shot. Not only that, but he was able to take down a Hitmon Lee. And was this close to taking out him on Chan, but sadly went down. What a run unknown has been doing. So to take down him on Chan, we used a Deli Bird and used a Fly to take him down. Then Corsola was able to eat a hit from Earthquake and take down Onyx using Surf. Now I didn't know this was going to happen because once I used Fly with Deli Bird. He used a rock slide and still hit me. I didn't even know that was a thing in Pokemon. Let me know, have you guys ever experienced that before or ever knew about that? Because I didn't. So I decided it was time to throw in my secret weapon with Sunflora. Now before I could even get Elite Sheet off, he hit me so hard with Cross Chop. Machamp is going to be such an issue. Now, sadly, we did lose a son of Flora in the process. Now, I threw in a Sudowoodo hoping something good would come out of it. Now, he hit me extremely hard again with Cross Chop. And Rock Slider did absolutely no damage. Now, this was the point of time that I had to use one of the three potions I'm allowed to use during battle. But in the end, it didn't matter because my champ was able to take down my pseudo Wudo. Now I was feeling very scared and stressed. Now this was it, Dunsparce, my last hope. If my champ would get one hit on me, I knew I was done for. But the unthinkable happened. My first headbutt made my champ blinch. And then, thank god for Leech Seed, which did even more chip damage. And I can't believe it, the Quick Claw I put on Dunsparce hit at this exact moment, and I was able to take down a Machamp and a Bruno. The Pokemon gods are watching over me. But here we go with the fourth in a final Elite Four member before the champion. Now, Karen starts off with one of the most bulkiest Johto Pokemon, Umbreon. Now I started with Pseudo Wudo to use Low Kick, but it didn't do as much damage as I hoped. So I thought I would switch into Sunflora and Elite Sheet him. But she had the same idea and switched into Gengar. So at that moment I switched out to Corsola and after getting hit with two Focus Blasts, Corsola went down. Now I switched into Unknown to use Hidden Power and it did do a lot of damage. But sadly, he ended up trapping me with Destiny Bond and we both went down. Now, Karen went back into using Umbreon and this was my chance to leech seed this Umbreon. And after a little back and forth and boosting up my special attack with growth, Sunny was able to hold on and take down Umbreon. And we were so close to also taking on her next Pokemon, Murkrow. But it ended up using Whirlwind and Sudowoodo was brought in. But that's alright because Murkrow was easily taken down. And when Vileplume came in, Delibird was up to the task once again, used a fly and took him out in one shot. Now once Houndoom came in, this is where it started to get kind of tricky. Because Houndoom was hitting pretty hard. Now even though Low Kick did do a lot of damage, I decided to use a full restore to keep Pseudo Wudo in the fight. And that's exactly what happened because Pseudo Wudo was able to eat another hit and we were able to take down Houndoom and beat Karen, the final E4 member. Alright, this is it. This is what we have been fighting for this whole time. It is now time to battle Lance the champion of Johto. 
Now, he was not going to be easy, so I had to be prepared with the best strategy. Now, I started with Sunflora so I could leech seed the Gyarados. As well, his Intimidate wouldn't have that much effect because Sunflora is a special attacking Pokemon. But even so, Sunflora easily went down because Gyarados knows Ice Fang. This was not a great start. So once I switched in to Dunsparce, I used Glare to quickly paralyze Gyarados. Now after getting a couple hits, I decided to switch into Unknown to hopefully take this guy down. Unknown was so close to taking Gyarados down, but sadly he went down as well. On the next turnaround, Dunsparce was finally able to take down Gyarados. Sadly, I'm already two Pokemon down so fast. And for his next Pokemon, he's already throwing in his big boy Dragonite. And now I threw in a Delibird and I actually one-shotted him with a Blizzard. Now with Aerodactyl coming in and being one of his fastest Pokemon, I threw in a Dunsparce so once again to paralyze him and cut his speed. Now this went back and forth for quite a while. I kept using Roost to keep Dunsparce in the game and Headbutt to get as much damage as I could. Now when Aerodactyl was at least low health, I threw in a Sudowoodo and got off a great Rock Slide to take him down. Now when his second Dragonite came in, I tried doing the same strategy as I did before, but sadly he got Thunder off first and Delibird went down. Now when Sudowoodo came in, we both hit each other hard with Thunder and Rock Slide. But Sudowoodo was a paralyzed and that stopped me from killing him, so I decided to use one of my three potions right now. And on the next move, finally this Dragonite went down. But of course, there's always one more Dragonite lurking in the corner. So I threw in a Dunsparce to paralyze him, but sadly he went down with Dragon Rush. So I'm down right now to two Pokemon. So Sudowoodo comes in, hits him hard again, and eats a Blizzard, and was able to take down this Dragonite. Oh my god. This was it, a 2v1 battle. Now before my Sudowoodo went down, I did end up getting off one Sucker Punch. Sudowoodo, you have been amazing. This is it, ladies and gentlemen, a 1v1 battle for the end of the run. I could not believe it. Now his Dragon Claw did not hit me that bad, but Surf did quite a lot of damage. I was this close to actually taking it down a lands, but of course he had to use a full restore. And once again, I was this close to taking him down with a power gem, but again, full restore saved his life. But third time's the charm because after hitting him twice with Surf, we were able to take down Charizard and beat Lance, the champion of Johto. I could not believe it. This was actually such an insane battle. Ladies and gentlemen, we have beaten Pokemon Soul Silver with the worst team imaginable. I could not believe it. This team was so fun to use and very different from what I'm used to. And there it is, all these Pokemon deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Guys, this video took so long to edit and make. Make sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you have not. And let me know what worst team challenge do you want to see next. What generation do you guys want to see? I'm having really fun making and doing these videos. If you guys have not joined the Discord, all blue links are down below. It has been it has been an absolute honor, guys. Thank you guys so much, and I hope to see you guys in the next Pokemon video.